Hey Answers Now family and friends, Adam Dreyfus here doing our weekly Parent Support University. Uh, I'm the Chief Science Officer of Answers Now and also one of the co-founders. You can learn more about us at GetAnswersNow.com, um, but uh, I highly encourage you, and it's absolutely free, to just go to your phone, um, open up your uh, app store, whether that's a your iPhone or your Android phone, uh, just type answers now, no spaces in the search uh, function, and you will get, um, you'll be able to download the app for free. Uh, we got all kinds of stuff on there that you can do for free. Um, talk to the parents, you can uh, read the blogs, we've got all kinds of information. Um, but our main product, the main thing that we do is we connect parents directly to their own BCBA. So you have a BCBA in your pocket. Uh, whenever you need it. A lot of our folks uh, uh, get ABA services, either their kids go to a ABA school, applied behavior analysis school, um, or get in-home supports, but we're here to support parents and kind of provide that, um, uh, that, that wraparound service that has been lacking in the industry. The other thing we want to do is we want to just reduce the barrier of entry to uh, these services. Um, as you're going to hear today, <laughs> this, this particular uh, episode might get me in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> um, we are very frustrated that here's all this great information for parents, and yet parents still feel isolated, overwhelmed, um, uh, and really disconnected from the process. And we've been doing this 30, 40 years. We've really demonstrated that we can help uh, um, severely impacted kids out. Um, and it is um, uh, most of the interventions and most of the stuff we do is really well understood. It's not brand new. Uh, we didn't just invent it. Um, we're essentially doing most of what you see when you see somebody really helping these kids out um, is a variation or a modification of stuff that was sorted out in the late 60s and early 70s. Um, certainly the techniques have improved, um, but it's uh, a lot of the same uh, core stuff. So check us out at GetAnswersNow.com um, or again, go to your app store and download the app for free. So what we've been doing ever since the pandemic started is one of my favorite resources for parents is the Affirm modules, A-F-I-R-M. Uh, the Affirm modules um, are a series of about two, two and a half hour long modules um, that help unpack the evidence-based practices. That's a fancy way of just saying the pile of information that we know works. So um, each evidence-based practice, it sounds like it's a kind of its individual thing, but it's really the, the, the toolkit. So if I was a carpenter and I came to your house and I opened up my toolbox, right, there's all the tools I've got to help build your house. Well, a board-certified behavior analyst has a toolbox, and those are evidence-based practices. Everything's based on um, evidence. And so a really neat thing the National Professional Development Center did a few years back is put them all in one place and create these kind of training modules. Um, and as great a resource as it is, uh, it's still not super user friendly, it's not super parent friendly. So uh, you don't see a ton of parents um, leveraging it because it's really, you could just kind of like a, a little university uh, for parents. Um, so we've talked about, um, I think we're about 18, 19 in, we've talked about, and, and, so, and these are some of the terms that right people are like, I don't know what this guy's talking about. Antecedent based intervention, extinction, reinforcement. These are all very clinical terms and they mean very specific things, but they also, it's kind of like saying, uh, handing someone a book in a foreign language and saying, oh, this is an amazing book. Uh, I mean, it's in French, but here, here's this book, and I hope you enjoy it. And you're like, well, I'd like to enjoy it, but I don't know French, so probably not. And uh, everybody I run into just keeps giving me more books uh, uh, in French, so not super useful. Today, we are going to be talking about uh, PRT, uh, Pivotal Response Treatment or Therapy. Um, it is an evidence-based practice. Uh, and uh, when you hear people describe it, um, pivotal response treatment or pivotal response therapy, they will say, well, it's like ABA, um, but it's a little different, right? It takes into account different things like uh, development or motivation, which is a ridiculous thing to say. I'm sorry, this is going to be a weird one. <laughs> um, but every behavior analyst, that's sort of the main thing that we're trained on. So to say that somehow there's this thing uh, called pivotal response treatment that's different than ABA because it takes into account um, motivation is just nonsense. Uh, all of uh, uh, the sort of the behavior analytic interventions take into account motivation. They'll say, well, well, it also, it, it, it takes into account child development. So does <laughs> the interventions. Um, uh, there is no distinction. Um, it is not different than uh, ABA. Um, and this is where probably I'm going to maybe be a little controversial. So pivotal response uh, treatment was developed at um, UC 
uh, University of California, Santa Barbara. I wanted to make sure I got it right. Sometimes I say UCLA, uh, UCSB um, uh, by uh, Drs. Cagle um, and at the Cagle Autism Center. And it's a fantastic place. And they are tremendous clinicians who have uh, added uh, probably infinitely more to this field than I ever will. Um, but pivotal response treatment is not some kind of special thing. And here's my problem with it. Um, and I usually am not going to, you're not going to hear me say anything about a problem I have with evidence-based treatments. Um, this one is anytime you hear sort of a brand or somebody's put a name on a treatment package, um, that's a problem because it creates another barrier of entry uh, to this treatment for parents. So say you're a parent and you want pivotal response uh, treatment. Sounds great. I read about it. I saw a video about it. It's fantastic. What do I have to do? Oh, I, you know, only people who have taken the course are allowed to do pivotal response treatment, which is crazy making to me. Crazy making uh, because there's none of their treatments are outside of the canon of ABA treatments. So the pivotal responses that they're talking about, there's four pivotal responses that are you know, crucial. That's what pivotal is, crucial responses. Um, motivation, any, any ABA person uh, is going to be taking into account uh, the motivation of the child. Initiation, do they, how do they initiate? Um, Self-regulation um, and multiple cues, having the kids uh, be able to uh, register multiple cues. Any good programming done by a behavior analyst uh, should incorporate all of those and uh, well-trained behavior analysts um, uh, uh, just do them as a matter of their course. Um, one of the criticisms of pivotal response treatment, and I think it's a legitimate one, is they go out of their way to describe it as um, uh, parent-driven, right? It's or not parent-driven, child-driven, child-initiated. Well, as someone who's been doing this for decades, um, and as a if you are a parent or a caregiver of uh, someone diagnosed with autism, you know that you can't just wait for them to want to play with you or to be interested in something that you want to talk about. Um, that's part of the problem. Is that just doesn't happen naturally. And so if I go into a room and I might have all my toys out and I'm doing pivotal response therapy and it's a session in which I'm just going to let the kid, um, uh, I'm going to follow the kid's lead. Well, what if the kid just wants to play with the fidget the entire time? And if I go to take the fidget, they have a huge upset. That is not an uncommon experience for most of us who've been uh, um, working for, uh, with uh, folks uh, on the spectrum. Um, and so that, uh, that element of it um, I, won't, I don't want to say differs from ABA, uh, but most practitioners recognize um, that to engage a child on the spectrum, especially a severely impacted kid on the spectrum, you can't just wait for them. You have to manufacture opportunities, um, whether that's interfering with something that they're playing with, um, playing with something that you know that they like so that they're kind of being uh, drawn over to you. Uh, and again, like it's, I don't want it to sound like I'm so critical of uh, pivotal response therapy. I am critical of somebody taking... Um, some piece out of the big pile of information that is super useful to parents, putting their name on it, charging additional money for it, and saying that it's a, a, a necessary treatment or really um, uh, um, that that's the only way that your kid uh, could possibly get better um, is uh, troublesome for me uh, because it just makes it harder for parents to get help for their kids. If they feel like, oh, here's this neat thing, but then I got to find, and there's not hardly anybody trained in pivotal response therapy. Go ahead and look on their uh, treatment, look on their website. Um, uh, a better way of saying it, and this is, I say this about everything, is structured play produces results. So uh, ABA, Applied Behavior Analysis, is essentially structured interaction, right? It's not random interaction. Uh, whoever's working with your kid should have a plan. They should have goals. They should have strategies. There is a structure to it. So applied behavior analysis is uh, when applied to uh, working with uh, students and adults with uh, uh, children and adults with disabilities is structured interaction. Structured play would probably not the best way to describe it. Pivotal response therapy, same thing. Um, other than it's got its own trademark and costs money. And if you want to get certified in it, uh, you've got to go to their special place. And there's three levels of certification. So um, frankly, three levels of uh, three barriers of entry to this information. So what we're trying to do here at Answers Now is reduce that barrier for you um, and for everybody. Uh, because this stuff, 
Again, it's all publicly available researched interventions. You can go onto Google and type in ABA interventions and you will get thousands of research articles that you can print up and in the methods section of that article, it will describe to you how to do what it is that they did that resulted in better social skills, better language skills, um, uh, more vocational skills. Uh, so you could do it all yourself. Um, and that's really all a BCBA is, is someone who's read a whole ton of articles and then been trained in those specific interventions so that they can do them with a high level of accuracy uh, and help other people. That's what we're here to help you do, <laughs> is to not have to read thousands of articles, um, but to, uh, to access that information um, uh, uh, in a much more easy way. Um, so we have text-based support, video support, a lot of different ways of doing that. Uh, again, I'm Adam Dreyfus. I'm the Chief Science Officer of uh, Answers Now. You can find out more about us at GetAnswersNow.com. At some point, there's probably a little that comes on the screen here and says GetAnswersNow.com. Uh, you can also go to the Apple Store or the Android Store, uh, the Google Play Store, if you would, if you would have it, um, and type in Answers Now, no spaces, A-N-S-W-E-R-S, uh, N-O-W, um, and you will get be able to download the app for free. Um, we are adding all kinds of features right now, making it um, much more useful for the uh, delivering um, instruction, which uh, wasn't originally what we had uh, done, but the pandemic has definitely knocked everything sideways. Um, so you can get on there. Uh, we are taking insurance uh, now. We're gonna be taking Medicaid pretty soon. Um, uh, this is a pivot for us, but it's a wonderful for you as we um, try to come up with um, uh, our come up with reduce the barrier of entry to these services for you um, so yeah check us out at getanswersnow.com um, we are talking about evidence-based practices uh, today we've been talking about pivotal response treatment or therapy uh, terrific it's a terrific package it's a uh, if it was if it was as advertised kind of like this different kind of thing I'd be much more enthusiastic about it um, but it is a bird of a feather it is applied behavior analysis wearing a different coat. And I understand it because um, for totally understandable historical reasons, some people don't like the term ABA. Uh, it's associated with some, uh, some negative things, uh, especially early on when, uh, um, when we were first um, kind of determining the efficacy of applied behavior analysis to help severely uh, impacted um, individuals. There was a lot of punishment procedures that were used. Uh, to try to reduce behaviors and change behaviors. Uh, things have changed a lot. Um, doesn't mean we don't um, use punishment procedures, um, but so does everybody. Like if, before I get myself in trouble, like time out is punishment, taking away something is a punishment, uh, ignoring somebody is a punishment. These are all um, uh, things that uh, your average parent and certainly um, uh, therapists use to try to um, uh, result in socially significant behavior uh, is usually the term that is used. Uh, I like to say it is, how do we help this kid or this adult behave in a way that opens their world up maximally? So that can mean giving them language, uh, teaching them social skills, teaching them um, things to do in their leisure time. If the only thing you do in your leisure time is poke a wall, you're probably not going to have a whole lot of friends. Although I'm pretty sure that you could find a group online where I'm, it's just the poke the wall group. Um, I'm being a little facetious. Uh, what you're trying to do is let them have the most independent life possible. And left to their own devices, they may require 100% of support. But with expert intervention, um, uh, they might require only 50% support. The goal is always zero support. They don't need any support. They might be a little different. They might be some kind of weird. They might have their own sort of idiosyncrasies, but they get to choose where they go. They get to choose where they live. They get to choose who their friends were. That's the goal. Um, and again, left to your own devices, a lot of these kids are not going to develop those skills. So tools like, I mean, God bless the Kegels, um, pivotal response treatment is a wonderful package, um, uh, but it is ABA by another name. So with that, uh, I'm going to end probably my most controversial um, of these uh, uh, podcasty things. Um, I'm Adam Dreyfus. I'm the Chief Science Officer of uh, uh, Answers Now. Uh, I'm a board certified behavior analyst, and I'm also one of the co-founders of Answers Now. And uh, hopefully you're having a great day, and you and your family are safe. <laughs>